on Fox Footy today calling all the action, Anthony Hudson and Dwayne Russell. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, it was amazing just the discussion there between Eddie and Nicky Wimmer and what is a very powerful moment and continues to be. Hey, Dwayne, great to be, to be witness to it from up here as we look down over the Adelaide Oval. Yeah, these are magnificent scenes. I hope these pictures paint thousands and thousands of words that you're watching now. Wherever you're watching this great game of ours, we want to have turned a corner. Get ready. Let's go. Tells us the and call. hopefully we will turn it. Tells us the call. Oh, it's a tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Brad Hill winning the toss and we will kick to the left of screen. Just the unified approach. And yeah. We see it with the joint banner and Anzac Day and, and it just helps us appreciate what is trying to be achieved and Nicky Winmar, just an incredible player. 30 years ago, tomorrow. He made that incredible gesture. And now, as uh, he was talking about 97, yeah. we talk about the immediate future, which is his Saints taking on the Pies here. The last round, the last game of Gather Round, which, as we've heard, if you just joined us, is going to be in Adelaide for the next three years. And these are the unbeaten Saints. This is one of the huge stories of the year so far. And we saw Essendon pass their test with flying colours yesterday against Melbourne. Can the Saints under Ross Lyon, who came so close against Collingwood back in 2010, to winning a second flag for this club, can they be unbeaten after five? It's an amazing ladder when you look at it. Essendon could be more top tonight, equal top tonight. You've got Melbourne losing. You've got the secure situation that no one would have foresaw. They've won every game so far this season. Collingwood started with three wins. They're playing an aggressive game style, which puts the writing on the wall for everybody else. If you want to win games of footy, you've got to kick a score and play aggressive attacking football. And we've seen across this round, it's been a high scoring round mm. this round. So it sounds as if, it looks as if you're going to have to continue to score well if you want to win in September, let alone get there. Repeating no, Jordan Degoe for Collingwood. He is ill. Will Hoskin Elliott, who also has been crook during the week, did make the trip to Adelaide and is playing. We'll start on the bench along with uh, Jack Ginevan, who returns, Markoff and Johnson. So this is it. What a sight over Adelaide Oval. It's been an incredible round of football. We've gathered in Adelaide, one to go. It's the Pies against the Saints. And Adams has the first meaningful possession. And Pendlebury, who played his 350th on this ground last year, takes the ball out wide, Maynard. Looking for Bobby Hill. Side bottom kept on coming. Yeah. Only as far as one of those stellar Saints. And Sinclair Boy who on. takes the mark and he's going to send them forward for the first time along the wing. Just having an outstanding season as is Caminiti who crashed that pack. Philip gets the handball out wide. Hill from just outside the arc. Doesn't want to waste it. Floats into the pocket. Still alive for the Saints. Higgins was asking for the handball. He was there for it but it didn't come to him and... He's OK with it. As we predicted early, Dwayne, uh, or, or Ross Lyon was talking about it, that Billy Frampton has taken the ruck for Collingwood. Flung in the air, Frampton does get that knock to Josh Dacos. Little fumbly in the square, and they thought about rushing it. There's a mad scramble, about 15 over it, and holding the ball is a free kick to the Saints. Oh, there's some verbal going on as well. Red Crouch. Really enjoying that free kick. Could we fit any more in the goal <laughs> score? <laughs> yeah, it's like a game of twister in there where they're all over it. And now all of a sudden, Crouch back to his old home ground. Kicks the opener after a bizarre start. Uh, 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 what do you think about that decision, Frampton, in the ruck? Do you think it's a wise look, one? Look, I think it makes sense with uh, McStay going to play more of a permanent forward. Frampton, uh, obviously, with the St Kilda forward line being not as tall and, uh, and not as aggressive in terms of up in the air, uh, I think Frampton going in there certainly helps against Marshall. Here's the free kick again. Let's have a look at it. So, players diving everywhere. There was bodies flying. Murray, uh, sorry, yeah, it was at uh, Murphy under there. Yeah, perhaps. Murphy. M Murphy and just caught in under him. The umpire was right there to see it. That's one of those ones that could go certainly either way, but Brad Crouch, that's a good start to his game. Oh, he's had a great start to the year, 34 touches last week. He's averaging just over 30, which is career best. It's early days. 
His previous best was when he was here playing for Adelaide in 2019. It was a best and fairest year. Now we get our first look at Collingwood. Chris with the handball to Mitchell, who has been hitting the scoreboard this year a little more than he has previously. And that's a fine response from Tom Mitchell to tie the game up. You said it's high scoring, Blaine. <laughs> Uh, this is where the Collingwood's improvement has been so far this year. So last year, Hutto, 17th in clearances and, and didn't necessarily score that well from stoppages. But here's the spread. Good ball use. Fast handball. And that's a sublime finish from Mitchell from outside 50. Not known for that type, but he's right there on Crouch. So Crouch starts with the goal. And then he's a bit sloppy with his defensive pattern. And that's a really nice finish for Mitchell. It's really allowed this year, with Mitchell being in the side now, Crisp and Dugowie, even though Dugowie's not there today, to be able to be those first and second receivers and get on the spread, in, the spread instead of being stuck inside because Tom Mitchell is there. Great finish. So Marshall and Frampton again to go at it. Penalty with Crouch and Mitchell gets on the end of a perfect palm down. Wobbles that towards attacking 50, but getting back Stocker. Been a good inclusion for the Saints. Last minute pickup in essence. It's fitted in perfectly. Yeah, it's really well structured up behind the ball here, the Pies. Not allowing any quick movement at all. Moore comes down, takes a good mark, contested mark, big pack too. Inside kick, which is what they've wanted to do all season. Adams looks around. He had Frampton on the outside for the handoff if he wanted it. Wangani Malia goes with a fist instead. McCreary crumbs it, feeds it back inside. Adams found some space. Did he get a push in the back from Marshall? He did. Free kick. It's a bit stiff. It's almost in the side. Yeah, it was. The umpire was right there. It's a desperate attempt. He had to try and do something there because he's going to run into a, an open goal. It's a real skill, isn't it, to be able to do the diving tackle, yeah. the desperate lunge without pushing him in the back and it's a little bit stiff it was just that right hand just touch the number yeah that's your line collingwood still collecting start, from start. that heath short trade originally a pick 13 back in 2001 with the giants Jack, Jack, <coughs> the crowd giving silence big crowd here again at the adelaide oval for this final game of gather round you can almost hear a pin drop as he launches that and launches it way wide, so nothing to cheer there for Collingwood fans. Yeah, he started well, though. He's had the four disposals, hasn't he? Mm. So he's really, he talks about sort of the mix that uh, the Pies have got with the like of, likes of Mitchell and others now fighting through the middle. Oh, shoddy kick on the way out, bit of fortune for battle. It made life awfully difficult further the field for Ross, but skilled enough. Wanganeen Miller, Malera through the middle. Hill keeps on running. They always had the extra to give. Hunter Clark, a little off balance. Knew roughly where his teammates were. Wood was able to get it through. Up and down the mine shaft from Filippo. It's going to land in the pocket. Tough one for Owens. And Gresham couldn't find it underneath as Mitchell could. And Josh Dacos, but Crouch, he's got to have the opportunity, which he doesn't take to kick a second. Wood, now it's all a rushed affair. And side bottom is able to work Collingwood into some space, and it's Elliott's wing for now. Yeah, had plenty of space to use, but not a lot to go to forward, so I had to wait, go back to McStay, and he turns it over. So it's worked perfectly for the Saints because they had time to get that wall back because of Elliott hitting the pause button. Marshall hands it off. A little chip kick wide from Ross is good. Burns in some space, delayed the kick. He was buffeted on the kick. And Forced him to turn it over to France, and Collingwood can return oh, the favour here yeah. and play on quickly with Nick Dacos in control. Looks like he's rucking today. He's got the shin guard on, Billy Frampton. Didn't do much ruck work last week. Stand, but obviously with a smaller St Kilda forward line, he's been commissioned into the ruck. Both defences really well set up. So wing, half forwards on. working on a similar line. They're getting right back into helping their defence. Crisp's kick is a little wide. Understandably, he wasn't quite himself last week. Just had the 15 disposals. Collingwood lead by one. And it will be interesting. Craig McRae was quite defensive about what not having the recognised Ruckman cost them last week. They it absolutely didn't... had an effect. Yes, Don't worry about that. He slightly changed his tune by the end of the week. So there was arguments either way. But the, the numbers from stoppages, of course, favoured the Pies, as he was quick to point out. Good pressure from Mitchell and Pendlebury. Stocker. It has been a handy acquisition. It's tight stuff, isn't it? Relentless pressure from Pendlebury. And he threw it. 
according to the umpire at least. Yeah, they're a good pressuring team, St Kilda. That's on display again there. I don't think uh, Scotty was on oh, the police. Oh, turned it over the side bottom. Gives it back in our side bottom because every Collingwood fan was hoping he'd play on quickly. He had to wait because every Collingwood player was running back. He pulls the kick into the hole. Big fly by Marshall trying to drop into the hole. And again, there's a stalemate with a number of players around it. And we're going to see this a bit. There's every player in one half of the ground. Yeah, even just that inside 50, you can see the winger, the ruckman, the St Kilda's defensive action looking so solid early. Marshall provided with a tap, but Adams... Oh, his way through. Elliott had more success, and Hill with a reflex kick is a good one. Two for the Pies. That was fantastic, Hutto, and that's the strength of the Collingwood Football Club. So, number one scoring from stoppage team this season. That was on show there, Ford 50 stoppage. They're well organised here, so they block for each other, they let each other play their roles, and they keep the ball moving forward out of this congestion, and that's what happened. Eventually gets the Hill, snaps it over his shoulder. They're a very strong team now. St Kilda, number one in the competition at defending stoppage, but in that arm wrestle and the game within a game, Collingwood wins out there. It's been their real, real improvement, hasn't it, Brownie? Yes. Talks about it not being a strength. Number 17th last year ranked, but clearance difference, number eight. And then, as you said, scoring from stoppage is a real strength. Number one in the AFL and two of their goals today so far, well, they've come from stoppages. So here's the big test. Ash Johnson into the ruck now for Collingwood against Marshall. So Frampton's been doing it so far today. Johnson climbs. Marshall palms it down to Pendlebury, to Mitchell, to Nick Dacos running off half back. Clean handoff, although Chris went one handed. Try and mop up his mess. Wood was there, slung out of it. Marshall overzealous, but got away with it. We'll get a ball up just outside, attacking 50 for the Pies. Nine minutes before Nick Dacos had a disposal, that'd probably be the <laughs> slowest start to a game ever, wouldn't it? His second favourite for the Brown line now. Still by himself. He's arguably had the best 30, first 30 games of all time. Here he is scrambling it inside 50. Getting back Stocker, Howard, Sinclair. Flicks it out wide to Burns. So they've got the overlap run. Wilkie, a little chip kick to battle. And he decides to hold it up for a couple of seconds, see what's on offer. Really at home in defence, as we saw last year, battle. Target's half forward. It was a pretty aggressive line he took forward. Saints do tend to play the boundary more than any other. The pressure is immense from Collingwood. Something was a real trait of those theirs last year and has continued on this season. Forced the ball up on the wing. Ross was fielding it from side bottom through Josh Dacos's hands. Ross probably had a little bit more to room than he realised. Filippo, instant handball, crouch on, again, Moore on, and Quayner. They don't really realise that it was touched. They do now. Yeah, just watching this Nick Dacos scenario. So he's the one that's been able to set up loose off the back of those stoppages in between the arcs because of the St Kilda high half forward getting in there. Not an ideal scenario. Owens to his mate, Windhager. Nice combo. He gets it back from Filippo, squeezes the kick wide. Moore, Cordy, clean bowled the two of them and it's through for a behind. But Owen's doing some ruck work and he and Hager go out on the ground about an hour before everybody else normally when they arrive at games and just mess around and do that kind of stuff. Yeah, he did some nice work last week doing those ruck rolls from time to time. Dwayne was able to get a goal or two from that situation. So Colin would be aware of that. Dacos heads out towards Johnson, but it's all St Kilda at the back until McCreary came on the scene and had an impact straight away. Shoulder to shoulder, Clark didn't flinch. Left foot kick forward for the Saints. Again, an attacking frame of mind. Higgins has been in great goal kicking form. Pumps it long, Caminiti with two to contend with. Went through Gresham's hands now, Owens. Filippo came, but Markov got the handball to steady the pie ship. Josh Dacos to Mitchell, confronted, found his left boot somehow. Manganin Miller, the combat was in the air against Johnson. Sinclair takes territory. Philip Pope dumped it across to Crouch. Didn't have time to get set. So just a kick with hope. Murphy, you know he'll go back time and time again. Collingwood pressure's been good so far. 12-6 to six in tackle count. They dropped off that after quarter time last week against Brisbane, but they've come out with a better intent today so far. You could argue Murphy's a better mark back with the flight. Amazing the commitment every time. Wood. Handball smothered by Gitterman. Good to have Jack back. He gets a pat for being back and back amongst the action. 
a couple of weeks of suspension and then a couple of weeks in the VFL. Looks a bit different without the blonde hair, Jack, do you? <laughs> you think he's going to just go under the radar? Maybe not. It's not his style. Hunter Clark around his body towards Gresham. He tried to trap it with his toe, which was strange. Oh, Zach Quayner went down with his hands. He had the better IQ, oh. IQ there. Attacked it with both palms. Little flick back is OK. Wind Hager sits it up for Caminiti to get there late. More front spot. Markov. Nick Dacos. And there's that poise again. He just waited, delayed it. Maynard was his target by hand. He scoots it past Howard. Side bottom. And it opens up beautifully. Here is Ginnivan to light it up early. He goes for goal. Missed it. Yeah, Brody, my check at the top of this, this square. There, you wonder if he could actually come back at the ball. He was asking, get him into oh, look out. Yeah, untidy for Sinclair. He was just the man to right the ship, though. To Wanganin Malera. And then the kick from Wilkie travels up to the wing, but not beyond Murphy. Certainly play aggressively, the Collingwood defenders. They're a long way up. There's opportunity for St Kilda forwards out the back. Well, they're playing high, though, Bernie, aren't they, at the yeah. moment? All the Saints players, I mean, it's the style of play that uh, Ross Lyon likes, get their half-forwards up. But uh, it plays into the Collingwood defenders' hands. Nick Dacos now up to seven disposals. Made his debut against the Saints in round one last year. Just had the 27 in his first game. Adams tees it up to the square. Wilkie got there. The danger is still apparent. Controlled well. Battle receiving from Wanganin Malera. And now they find Owens... He looks up and there's nothing. nothing. They've got yep. Quainer and also Maynard down the line. Had multiple decisions to make and he worked his way through them pretty well. Now it's over to Crouch. So back to battle. He's got Sinclair out wide on the boundary. He goes to Wilkie, who's back in his old home state. North Adelaide Premiership player who really had to fight hard to finally get on an AFL list. And now he might be all Australian bound. Hill to Wanganin Malira. Just couldn't get it to Higgins. It got to him eventually to Windhager. Rolls it. It might work. The 1 2. Filippo gave it back to him. Higgins found some space where there wasn't a lot. 1 2. Not the third. Owens top of the goal square. And again, we see a six or seven pack. High contact in the middle of it. Collingwood free. It was all a bit scratchy from the States, wasn't it? it was, yeah. But they were able to at least get it forward. It's happened a bit, though, hasn't it? Harder, they've, they've had entries. They just haven't been able to score it. That's what they'll try and do. The forward half turnovers with the strength of St Kilda. You know, back with a re-entry and a score. Patton, that was not so smart. Gittivan was terrific. Diligent in his defensive work. Patton gets a second chance and... Wasn't able to really make a good enough fist of it. Chris had the sharp hands working through Adams. Back again. Mark Offlinks up for Hampton. Now it's at a half forward. Hill pumps it deep. It'll sit for Johnson. He didn't need his natural leap. He just needs a kind bounce. And then he was true. It's still there. Everyone stopped for a moment. Battle got there with the extra body. He had to have a long look on the horizon again. There wasn't much there. Side bottom with a couple of his mates around, had the best vantage point, and he is within range. Yeah, the Pies are on early, so they've come to play defensively, they've been fantastic, and that's a really good example of the Pies at their best. When they won their first three games this year, they apply really good defensive pressure, and then when they go, they like to go through quick hands through the middle of the ground, they gain territory and get it inside 50. Good chop off there by side bottom. He's had a good start to the year, but quite last week. Game number 294, steals side bottom. He is usually a beautiful kick of the footy. That was not an example of that. So Collingwood lead by seven. Midpoint of this opening term. It's tight. You can feel a bit of tension around the Adelaide over. Burns. Down the line towards the wing. Caminiti overcooked his run at it. Left it behind. Filippo went and gathered. Adams meeting that sandwich. Flicked it over his head and now... The Saints are out, although Cordy, who got it from Marshall, had his kick smothered. Collingwood swarm around him. Is that ball? Did he drag it in? You bet it is. Set up really well behind the footy, Collingwood, as well. So, St Kilda are getting a lot of numbers around the ball at the moment, but they're not going to have any avenues to goal. With Darcy Moore back as the anchor. They look really good so far. Pendlebury tells the world he's going long and then goes short to Noble. Frampton just working their way around the arc. 
until a better opportunity presents. Frampton's not ne necessarily your best entry kick, but he heads long. McStay under it. Big fly was Bobby Hill. Flicks it over his head to Adams. Central kick, unselfish kick, but it doesn't quite work for them, unfortunately. And the Saints had about eight guys back in that defensive area to make sure it was cut off. It was a central kick, and Wilkie to relieve the pressure out wide. It was a good mark from Patton because he'd taken a, a knock just before then. I'm sure they'll have to test Patton or not, but the Saints are going to work through this with their hands. Hill, Clark again, the pressure after each possession just gets a little more difficult to negotiate and comes a ground on the win. Collingwood yeah, that, outstanding, Collingwood. That's so what far. the Saints have to do. They have to run and carry and, and, and use their numbers because they're so well up, set up uh, behind the ball. But at this point in time, Collingwood's pressure, which we know is a strength, fourth in the in the competition so far this year. They're right on top. Tight decision for the boundary umpire. Teams it's out on the full. Murphy wasn't waiting around to find out. Noble, extreme switch. Bobby Hill in the long sleeves. He's got runners. Frampton covering plenty of territory. And his role as the ruckman. Hoskin Elliott off the left boot. His skills are excellent. And he finds Elliott within range, who has a six-goal game here from a couple of years ago. And that's the other thing. When you've got so many numbers set up well behind the play, it actually helps your offense because you win the ball back and you can spread it quickly to uncontested marks and free-flowing movement, just like on that occasion. Yeah, defenders got hurt last week, Collingwood's defenders. They play aggressively, uh, but when the pressure wasn't up on up the field, they got hurt out the back. It's been unusual in front of goal this year for Jamie Elliott. We know he's a sharpshooter normally. Four goals, eight his total. That's right on the line, but not over. Wilkie into the pocket for Burns. He decided to, I guess by the rules, he was forced to try and keep it in, which didn't necessarily help the Saints' position. And so a ball up's probably not a bad result considering. The Pies pressure 218 in this first quarter. So they keep going at that rate. It's going to be difficult for St Kilda to score. Well, some people hate the insufficient intent rule, but that was it working to perfection there. Murphy, good grab in the middle of that pack. Always happy to take the heat with the Sharon. Hands it off to Nick Dacos. He sends it long chance for well no one did a leap there's a chance for the leapers but Wilkie gobbles that up because Johnson had run himself under the ball Wangani Malira to Butler that's a better kick both teams turning the ball over oh it's 50 both teams turning the ball over by foot a bit Brownie the pressure's so intense but just a really nice kick there and the 50 metres certainly helps as well it's where the marks are being intercepted though isn't it it's correct been the difference still yeah, now is, yeah. Butler's given an enormous amount of room and that's a spectacular grab Higgins lands hard though on his buttock let's hope he's okay been a superb form been a live wire it's been an assist guy and he's been accurate 10 goals two this season for Jack Higgins. See what this breeze is doing. It held the last Collingwood kick out. He launches that goalward, and that's inaccurate across the face. He had the distance with ease. 42nd game with the Saints today after 43 with Richmond. Jack Higgins, how many can he bag today? So Nick Dacos. Crowd getting a little rowdy. Enthusiastic. Quainer in the back pocket. Low scoring opening term after a really fast start. Majacek. Gene Malira and Marshall. The extra body for the Saints was helpful. Crouch. If he doesn't get an insufficient intent, which he shouldn't, it'll be a throw in. That, that, that inside 50 is right, atypical of what we're seeing from the Saints in the in this first quarter so much pressure around the ball I think the only one that has hit a target is that one from uh, Higgins just then or from Butler to Higgins just then so not much uh, opportunity for the St Kilda forwards at the moment shadows working their way across the Adelaide Oval late in this opening term scrap for the footy Dacos to receive from Adams back to my check close checking by Stocker and it's back over the boundary line again the ground has up has come up spectacularly well again today. A lot of rain here last night. For those who watched that game last night, this is the second game. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was. Second game being played here today, and it looks pristine. Marshall a little palm down, and no wonder they've won it back for another three years gather around here in Adelaide 
after this. Ross cut down by McCreary. Got a handball away just in time. Slung it to Burns. Feeds it inside. He knew he had Higgins. Just had a sider from here. Floats it. Moore read that to perfection. Yeah, he had more time, Jack Higgins. He didn't realise it, did he? He might get another opportunity. It is with Higgins. This time, he had good sight on what was ahead. And it's Cordy that takes the mark. Just been a handy fill-in player for them this year. It was a pretty canny pickup for them in the off-season, not, not realising how much they'd yeah, need him. Yeah, it's been important with no memory in King down there. Is that longer target? Not that they like to bomb it long much into their forward line. Usually pretty precise. And he tries to soften the kick. Oh, it wasn't far off, Philippo, but just a metre or two further, it carried than anticipated. And Noble... On the last line. This is where you've got to be careful with Collingwood. They can take the ball from end to end very quickly. So Noble heads in the my check direction. Got there from four deep. Pressed it to the deck. Contact below the knee. Contact below the knee. So Josh Dacos' ball. Yeah, they've almost preferred Cordy to Membry today. Membry was on the emergencies list. Could have played. So it'll be interesting to hear what the explanation of that is. Josh Dacos down the line over McCreary's head. And he split the middle. He had my check and McCreary and Hunter Clark came up with it. And oh, 50. Oh, so he's got to be brought within range here. So that was for uh, McCreary, McCreary on the mark, wasn't it? I think he asked him to stand. The umpire asked him twice. And he didn't do so. So it was a quick 550. Speaking of pickups over summer, he considered, we're told, joining North Melbourne over summer. Yeah, pick seven from 2011. Just eight games last year, but every game this year, and he's putting together a pretty good season. Any struts can start to put together a pretty good game if he slots this, and he does. Scores 11. Well, I think St Kilda will be happy for the score to be yeah, over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The way Collingwood have played, certainly from a pressure standpoint in this first quarter, they've done well to hang on here, St Kilda. They've had the running the last probably three or four minutes. Yeah. Uh, good to see they finally capitalised on that scoreboard. They've got to fix up these undisciplined free kicks or 50 metre penalties. So it's two in the last five minutes against Collingwood players. That was a mistake there. Good finish there by Hunter Clark. Look at the stats, Brownie, in terms of ground ball gets and contested possession. You know, so the Saints are actually on top of that area. So a really even contest after what looked like Collingwood to have the better of that middle the middle part of this quarter, yeah. the last three or four minutes, as you pointed out, they started to get their game and intensity, particularly around numbers of the ball. Have a look at how beautiful Adelaide Oval looks. Yes, you've become a bit of a South Australian again over the weekend, <laughs> Pav. I've noticed that. Four great days and nights of footy. Saints scrap it forward again. The instant hands. Oh, he's going Collingwood's way. The throw. Well, that'd be 50 downfield, is it? Maybe the ball was in motion, so it's just downfield yeah. rather than 50. Once an SA legend, always an SA legend. You know? talk, talk about yourself I'm there. I'm not talking well, about myself. Very <laughs> modest of you. The great Matthew Pavlich, of course. They won't let him back into Perth. No. He's pumping up South Australia. <laughs> Mycek hasn't had a possession yet, and he's outpointed by battle again. There is a thing called dual citizenship, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> not if you're in Parliament, anyway. Battle. <laughs> Back to the wing. Oh, oh. Caminiti has to go up the ground to get a clear run at it. Doing it out with more so far today. That's going to be a real test for the young man. He's impressed so much. Moore has stayed back in defence. That's a free kick again. And it is going to Moore. He was just restrained a fraction. Yeah, that kick to, to half forward when you've got Darcy Moore uh, on effectively some half forwards. It's just not the right execution. You can see the intent trying to move the ball quickly, but you need to kick it away from this guy. So Darcy Moore gets the one minute sign, goes long. My check crashed it down. Elliot flicked it up. Crisp. Owens is about to trap it, rolls it. Gittiman, big moment here, great smother. Wookie, heart and soul over the top of that. Owens tried to thread the handball through. The boundary line, his friend, and he knows it. Couldn't get it there. McCreary hits a good spot with that kick. My check, half held. Ball knocked down, Gittiman. Did he play for that? Sinclair relieves the pressure to Wood. Flicks it wide, and he finds Higgins on the run. Mason Wood's had an impressive year. He's very good in the air, Mason Wood, but he gets back defensively hard, and he's good at ground level. It's amazing in his 10th year. I mean, yeah. I think we saw his talent, didn't we, at North when he was young. And we did. It's taken all this time to get it together consistently. It's terrific. 
So, we don't know much more after a quarter of footy. Collingwood seemed to have the upper hand for a bit of it, but on the scoreboard, and that's all that matters, it's two goals to 14. A tight opening quarter in the last of the... And we can see the treatment on his fingers su suggests that he was in trouble, and that sub's about to take place with Wilson. Yeah, so... First game for Wilson for the season as play well. On, Ross blasted forward, touch play on. Higgins knew the call. Owens collects it. He bends it around the body. He needs a kick bounce. Oh, Cameron, he could have left that. He touched it and it was heading through. So, bullet dodge there from Collingwood. And it's going to be interesting now to see how they change this up. But stay out. Tom Wilson in game eight, first game of the season. At least he hasn't had to ruck. Might be only Johnson may have to go and support Frampton. Creary. So Frampton this week is playing in the ruck because they don't really have St Kilda don't have as many big forwards as most sides. Uh, so Frampton's been released into the ruck. Whack forward by Marshall. Wood. Crouch. Curled it. Bypass Dowens. Murphy. Been outstanding so far. Ross. Clark it was a clever little handball to get underneath to Marshall. Caminiti in front. Matched in the air by Murphy. Markov, forceful handball. Wanganin, Malera back through Sinclair. And Clark gets the kick to the 50. Josh Dacos. Right, right idea. And look, both teams are going to have to go that way inside 50 in terms of being... They're not that tall, Brownie. Neither side uh, in terms of their forward line is Especially that Especially with no mixed day. No mixed day, so they're going to have to be... Pretty precise, lower the eyes, go off the line, change the angles and find the free man inside 50. McCreary goes for distance. Clark got the crumb front and square. Almost turned it over. Stolen back. Ross had it, lost it, got it back, lost it again. Battle. And now the flick on from Hunter Clark. So chaos in the middle. Crouch collects it. Feeds it wide, hoping for Higgins. Got there, but the big fist of Moore. Put the rubbish out. Put into row eight. And we'll get a ball in. It's a good start so far. Darcy Moore. Pushed up on Jack Higgins, who's about half his size. He's got good athleticism, though, for a big man. Frampton to the front. Markov. Oh. Despite the, the duck, it was deemed high contact. And so Josh Dacos has had a, another tremendous season. Plays it wide. Try to bring my check into the game. He's denied access again. Clever spoil from Mason Wood. Doing all the things a good wingman should. Covering the territory and has a bit of a disconsolate Daniel McStay. Confirmation of the sub that has been made. Tom Wilson in for his eighth game of AFL footy. Clark just had the metre on penalty. Marshall. And the extra number there, just drifting in from the side, is Maynard. So they're not really giving Collingwood the corridor at the moment, forcing Maynard to go wide. And wide to a pack. My checks down there, couldn't get the big run at it. Battle scoops it over his head. Marshall found Hunter Clark somehow, and he turns it over to Maynard. And this time they use the corridor to Moore, to side bottom. If he can get there, he needs a bounce. Burns hunting him down, hunted him down and edged him out of it, then nearly won it back. It's in there somewhere. Side, he's got it. Gave it to Bobby. Hands it off to Markov. Chip kick, overcooked it. And Wilkie, again, read it so well. He's been doing that in unbelievable style for a couple of seasons down for the Saints. And he saves the day again. Ball on the outer side to Hill. Yeah, 12 intercepts last week, averaging nine per game. Kel Wilkie. Done a good job standing here as captain as well. Jack Steele's here, absent. Yeah, still out for another couple of weeks. Battle. He's 11th disposal, so he's getting plenty of it. Now Wood, at the last moment, realised McCreary, who has great closing speed, was nearby. So it's been slow and they've had to switch and, and move the ball, but at least there's even numbers inside 450. Caminiti is the deepest forward. He comes up. Owens looked likely for a split second. Now Collingwood into their moves. Crisp off to Markov through the middle. Elliott challenged. Hangs on against Howard. No easy feat. 
So Wilson's out there now. So the sub is out there, and this will be a slow oh, and a hold up. Is it, himself, right? is it concussion or blood? So it's neither, which is good news. Okay. He's got a smile on his face. He's taking yeah. a breather. Rocked him for a second, <laughs> but he's bought some seconds <laughs> to more if he wants it, and he does want it. Plays on to full forward. And it's well read off the boot by Battle. So Wilson's gone to full forward for Collingwood, playing out of the square at the moment. Battle decides to switch. Pretty good job Wilkie. to tall defender. You mentioned Wilkie before as well as Dougal Howard. And Hill in some space on the outer side. Sinclair. Yeah, both, both teams defending so well. I mean, you can see how slow and methodical they've had to be. And without those key forwards, it's harder to take a mark inside 50. Powerful display by Moore. Chris beat the initial tackle, flings it to Mitchell. Frampton, pretty good agility for a big guy. Couldn't connect cleanly with Crisp. In the end, he's worked over it. Crouch forward. Marshall posting up, but turning quickly and driving it to Higgins, who got out the back. And that might be the method. The lunging Higgins. Yeah, I mean... Good, good turnover from St Kilda in the midfield. We talked about this, Brownie, didn't we? Just coming into the game. Their midfield intercepts number two in the AFL so far. They set up so well. Win the ball back, and then that's when the defence is disrupted. Higgins was out the back on that occasion. And I think, as you said, Hutter, that it's going to have to be the patterning because they haven't got the height in their forward line. Got to win as much of the ball in that forward half of the ground. Midfield intercepts to then penetrate a disruptive defence. Clearly took a lot out of him. Full recovery time. He's used up all the seconds. Takes his approach now. Five goals last week, four the week before. And he's just getting started in Adelaide. He's got the energy to celebrate. <laughs> he was nearly out of the fence. Not quite Tom <laughs> Papley. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, no, it was a good kick. Well done there. Both midfields are really running well defensively, so supporting each other. That's why there's high numbers around the ball, so they're ready to capitalise then when they're able to get the turnover. Chris was almost out, but have a look at the St Kilda presence there, so they get an extra two numbers there. Well done to Marshall, identified it had been a quick turnover, so he would have just known instinctively he had spare teammates over the back path. Yeah, Darcy Moore, I think we'll look back on that one and think he could have made a quicker decision because he looked back and saw Higgins there. We know they like to play assertive and definitely in front, but had a quick look and thought, no, I've got him covered, and the kick was just a bit too good for him. Gets a rest. He's had a good year so far, especially the last couple of weeks. There's the intercepts. It's a real strength for St Kilda. Frampton Marshall down to Crouch. He's got a 43 possession game to his name on this oval. Little one-two, Filippo got it back from Hill, drives it long, and Cordy, with a little bit of assistance from Moore, content to get a ball in forward pocket. Early in the second quarter, St Kilda winning the centre clearances, so it was Collingwood's strength in that first quarter. Been able to get back on, on track there, the Saints. Frampton, Cordy, Frampton to the front, knocks it down to Butler, who immediately tackled by Pendlebury. Back this way. Big pack around it. Tight contest between two top of the table teams. Noble had it lost it. There's a few muffled calls of ball. It's in there somewhere. Crouch wing tackled nicely by Hoskin Elliott. The umpire says it's okay. Yeah. He tried. Did he try? He tried. Okay. Again, huge numbers around this ball up. Side bottom, dug it out, and Hill kept the momentum going Collingwood's way. Marshall trying to keep his hands up above the water. Quick hands out of there from Majacek. Dacos found a way, as only he seems to be able to look what it's created. Side bottom, and they keep on coming. Markoff inside the 50. Ginnivan thought about it and maybe regrets it. Actually didn't need to go onto his left. He could have gone back and probably hit Taylor Adams on the 45. He just didn't need to rush. He got the ball so quickly down the other end of the ground. That was the time for patience. Good movement though, Brownie, wasn't it? it was really great. good movement yeah. from your defensive half. The crowd can feel the intensity of this game. It's oh, scrapped by Dacos again. And speaking of big possession games, he's had a 35er on this ground as well. Pendlebury, who continues to refuse to act his age. Gets plenty of it to Hoskin Elliott this time as he 
tells Hoskinelli what to do with it. Another big pack forms for the leap. Through the hands. Still alive, though. Little bouncing ball. No, Gretchen caught it just before it did bounce, and they're away. Crouch looks up wide. Burns had Filippo behind him, who got back to spoil that last launch forward and then got the ball to launch it forward and turned it straight over to Moore. Right, right. And Collingwood on the rebound right here. Hill is right for ball. He was out. The Collingwood pies are out as well. Yeah, great linkage again through the middle. A couple of bounces from Nick Dacos. And, and nothing. So running in unison very well, the pies. So it's a real strength in. They're probably the best team in the comp running the ball from one end of the ground to the other. They just take off. They switch it to the other side. Great running patterns there. They've just got to finish that last kick going inside 50. High alert here. That he tried to take it on the right boot. Frampton versus Marshall. Josh Dacos, Elliott, weren't quite in sync there. We saw two goals from stoppage for Collingwood in the first quarter. Brownie, yeah, it's high alert if you're a St Kilda man inside this Ford 50. Elliott on the move. Frampton tried to do it himself. Sinclair. Gives his teammates time to at least make a contest. Well, there was no contest. Owens. Been an outstanding form. Our rising star nominee last round out to Stocker. Stand. And he holds it up. He's got... He had a couple of options wide. He decided to cross. Battle. Howard. Stand. Also back to his old Fire. home ground. Looks around. Sinclair. Marshall. Outside five, play on. But this is the kick. It's dangerous. It's inside. And it's to Ginneman, who's got options of plenty. Who does he want? Elliot. Had to go and compete for it. Hits the deck. Gathers the crumb. Looks up. Tackle. He fended a little. The umpire let him off. Ball out of play. Stocker wrapped him up. Nice tackle, but he's hurt him. Jamie, he's had a tough last 10 minutes. He got winded a few moments ago. And now... Hopefully he hasn't hurt his shoulder. Oh, oh yeah. his head, maybe. Hurt his head too, yeah. <laughs> Seen a few of these this round, haven't we? Unfortunately. Yeah, that was a little different, wasn't it? Mm. The others, but he's coming straight off for some care. This wasn't a great kick by Rowan Marshall. I'm not sure Ross would be that happy with that. Neither, neither team are going well officially. Um, by foot, are they? Yeah. Collingwood, 61%. We know that's not a huge strength of theirs, but... Yeah, defence prevailing so far at the Adelaide Oval. Filippo is really covering some territory. As Dwayne said, it got back to defend before. And then was taking the kick up into the 50. Great win from Cordy. Back to Wood. Markov played on its merits. Wasn't disturbed at all by the presence of Butler. Moore through Noble. And he had plenty to work with on the wing. Maynard got the call on the inside from Josh. And then Nick Dacos, who left it behind. Mitchell was ready and waiting and pounced. This is better from the Pies. But how many handballs can you have before you come unstuck? The umpire closest was pretty kind not to blow the whistle. And the Saints... Well, both sides are lose, just losing their composure yeah. here under the pressure. Noble spears that to Johnson. Better kick to half forward. Elliott's in a bad way at the moment with the trainers as well. He took an eternity to get off. Short pass to Josh Dacos. That's good. It's good by Johnson, a younger player. And he there. takes off. Caught the napping. And kicks it behind. Spot on, Brownie. A little bit of composure, composure from the Pies on two occasions there. Lowered your eyes, just found the loose man rather than blazing away. Both teams guilty of that. Yes, there's a lot of pressure out there as we have a look at both Ross Lyon and the Collingwood bench. But... Yeah, just not ideal from uh, both teams. There is pressure out there. Just going to find the right player at the right time to break open the defence. Maynard trying to provide a highlight for the big crowd. Couldn't finish it. Dacos through Noble to the other Dacos. Oh. Taken high. Again, could have been an argument that he contributed, but Ross certainly knows that the pies are side by side. And off darts Josh Dacos, but the wrong part of the footy. Bobby Hill read it early, but he's matched in his anticipation by Stocker. And the Saints, as they have all year, defending extremely well. Width on the kick this time. Battle again. That's 
Mark number 10 for Josh Batty. Burns to the outside. Patton's kick was wiped out immediately. And the Pies can spring forward. Mitchell, Hoskin, Elliott drilled oh. a oh. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of fortune. <laughs> deliberate? <laughs> to my chance. But even on that occasion, just have that awareness, Brownie, to take your grass in front of you. Use your legs. Keep running. There could have been something over the top from uh, Will oh, Oscar Elliott on that occasion. But, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll call it, or he might claim it at least, yeah. that he was <laughs> aiming for this one. Let's have a look. Kicked all his three goals no. last week in the third quarter. He's only had one disposal up until now, but we know he will keep coming at you all game. Meyer check. Been such a wonderful and reliable footballer for the Pies. And he ties the game up at the Adelaide Oval. His 10th goal for the season. 10 goals, 3. And we're back to level. Run well under Pies. They've been threatening Collingwood for the last five or, five or 10 minutes. They've just been clunky going inside 50. So defensive pressure's been good all day. You know, we can't say this was great execution. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they got the result they were after. So finally, it takes a missed kick for it to actually hit a target going inside 50, if that makes sense. Good finish there by my check. It's a good game. It's a good game of football. Both teams just struggling under the physical pressure from each opposition. That's why the mistakes have happened, especially in this second quarter. Final game of Gather Round. Back in the middle. Eight and a half minutes left in the half. Marshall rips it out of the air. Floats it wide. Hoskin Elliott, who was a little ill, we were told a couple of days ago, but he's taken his place. Josh Dacos back to Maynard. Chips it inside. Mitchell waited for it. Ross went and got it. And then Malera tight ropes the boundary. In fact, he floats it out. So it'll be... Collingwood ball and the quick transition is on if Nick Dacos wants to go. Which he does to Moore. There's a path with side bottom and McCreary out to the left. Well, that kick was nowhere near where it needed to be again. So they fall short with Wood, who can punch it into the middle. Filippo full stretch, got it now. Inside the 50, they're buzzing around. He tried to go by Gresham. And come aground again. The Pies veterans. Pendlebury side bottom and now Noble <laughs> Wycheck had to search high and wide to find it. He eventually got his bearings. Kenevan is the longest target. Stand Too far there. out of reach it. Might not be now for Pendlebury. He tries to get everyone sorted, telling them politely where to go. <laughs> Short to side bottom, almost within reach, still just on the edge. Stand. Wilson is down there, the activated sub. Johnson also was in the pack, couldn't get over Marshall. Chris fired out, McCreary got it working and gives the Pies back the lead. Well, it was an interesting decision there by Collingwood as to why they were slowing it down, but it was the right decision in the end. So still side bottom, waited for all his numbers to get inside 50, well, equalising the St Kilda defenders. Got the contest from my check, which is good, brought it to ground. Uh, from Johnson there, brought to the ground, Marshall at the front spot. And there was McCreary in a great spot for coming forward. He finished. And Jamie Allett's back on, guys. He's coming back on now, so he looks pretty good. He's running uh, back down to the forward pocket. I love that from Johnson. So, as a forward, the most important thing is the opposition doesn't take a mark. So, Johnson realised he wasn't able to mark it. He spoiled, got the ball to ground, created a goal for his teammate. Yeah, and good, good forward craft from McCreary, wasn't it? Because he was the one darting up, looking to get involved in the play, and then got front and square. Good, tight tussle, tussle. It's the only time these two teams meet in the home and away season this year. Good chance they might meet in the finals, though, the way they're going. Quick clearance from Ross. Crisp. Gresham jumps on him. Certainly on top of the clearance of this quarter, St Kilda, after Collingwood reached out in front in that period. Of the first quarter, 8-2 clearances in front of St Kilda. Four zip from centre clearance. Johnson in the ruck, wins it down, gets it down to Nick Dacos. Side bottom gave it to Chris, but he couldn't break away with it. And as soon as he gave it, he warned him he was in trouble. Moore to Noble. And Maynard just waited a second and flicked away to the boundary for a ball in. Got to say, Brown, it looks like a Ross Lyon game, doesn't it? it? It's a dour, tough, tight, 
really defensive type of game uh, to watch. And, you know, to, to Collingwood's uh, credit, they're, they're playing very well defensively as well. So really set up this one for a tight, a tight tussle. Marshall just too strong on that sort of throw in for Johnson, but it's to Collingwood's advantage, not for long. Marshall just Dad. found himself in the right position. The ball found Play him. On. Play on. He's played on. Quaino has the best look to spoil. Owens, not far off, in the air, underneath Gresham. Owens a second time, still no room to move, and Pies get it out of there quickly. Extra bodies are all St Kildas. Sinclair to Wood. Play on! Scouts the 50. Caminiti coming, as was Owens, but the teammate in front beat them to it. And it's Filippo to have the shot for goal. He's got a little bit of talent as well, this oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've spoken a lot about Owens, but this man's a genuine rising star of the competition. It, yeah, they rated him very highly at Woodville West Torrens in the, the, the le years leading into the draft, and he certainly had a standout uh, under 18 carnival. You know, he doesn't lack in confidence, and he's backed it up so far this year. Five goals won in four games. Saints need this, and he provides. And he's passionate too. So, as we were at quarter time, scores are level with five to go in the second. He's had a decent impact in the game too. It's his 14th disposal. Keep it goal. Just one of these up and coming young stars. You know, I suppose coming into the season, you wonder about St Kilda going right out. Where are the genuine stars? We know Jack Steele, of course, has been a fantastic player over the last few years. Where, which ones are the younger ones coming through? Already we've seen. Owens and Philippou, to name a couple, look like they're going to be there for a long time. You'll have a lot of family and friends in the house as well. Matthias Philippou, he picked 10 in 2022. In comparisons to Scott Pendlebury as well. Good to see yeah. them playing on each other. Right? Clearance and contested ball getting away from the pies at the moment. The Saints on top there. Adams, what was it forward? Early rise from Hill. Burns, battle, got under that a little. Patton's going to have to go and get it. They're about to go and get him. He got it to the line. And we saw the clearance numbers, the contested possession numbers as well in favour of the Saints, up plus 11 at the moment. In the second ground quarter. ball. Yeah, oh, yeah. the ball hits the ground. They're yep. just getting more numbers there at the moment. It's a strength of the Pies, so they've certainly come to play the Saints. Frampton, Marshall. They've worked their way to it. Adams. Josh Dacos. It's a fair bit on it. Hits a good spot on Wilkie again. Hands magnificent. Good to see Elliot out there for Collingwood as kick goes to half back. Burns can break. And a lot of intercept marks. 15 to each side. Murphy oh. came late and just fully almost overcommitted. Incredible attitude. Markoff bangs away to half forward, but not for the first time. It's a Intercept mark off half back today. Burns has a second crack and doesn't do much better, unfortunately, for the Saints. Murphy again thwarting the move forward. Get Evans in the centre. Noble is running, mate. So the switch has been affected, but in doing so, it's been disrupted. So poor execution, but that play from Murphy, I mean, courageous effort to begin with, then wins the next one. That kick into the middle opens the whole ground up. That's the style of play, just... Back, keep backing yourself in. That's what you'd be saying if you're a part of that Pies defence. We'll get that execution right eventually. Maynard with the experience. Beat Owens there. Heads toward half forward. Getting there late was Wilson. My check. Hill read his mind, but he couldn't get away with the possession. And Pendles, well, he hit the pause button again. He slowed time and found McCreary. Yeah, he did. And Kilder had set up really well defensive. In that defensive 50... Good decision in the end. It was really his only viable option. Give McCreary the 50-50 shot. A little bit of breeze right to left here, so it may favour the kick. Right footer. An important three minutes coming up to half time. McCreary and just inside the arc. It's across the face. It's almost it does stay in the field of play. Although umpire proves me wrong. It travelled the line a behind. Sinclair. Patton comes away. Back to the wing. Wood stood his ground. 
And he continues to impress. His eighth disposal for the quarter, Wanganeen Miller. To half forward through the fingertips of Kamenidi. And now Moore has side bottom, Maynard and Nick Dacos. Again, these handballs between the arcs is the method for the Pies. And again, it runs aground with Ross. Still with plenty to negotiate. Sinclair played it through battle. Clark, they'll get to half forward, but no further. Thanks to the skipper. Moore does the business and gets it out of bounds. His team leading by one. I think both defence have been very good, Pav. A lot of intercept marks and a lot of desperate lunges to spoil the ball. Craig McRae loved his work from his captain. Bit of confusion on the bench. One bench holding up with three minutes on, the other bench is holding up two minutes. Mitchell <laughs> wobbles it towards half forward. Bouncing ball. Elliot's about to pounce. It'll flick to my check. One of them's on South Australian time. It's <laughs> just Fine. inside the line. <laughs> nice read. Side bottom. Inside kick is pretty good. Who wants it? Bobby does, but he doesn't get it. Burns held his ground to Hill. Higgins comes down to help out, but he went to ground. Butler missed his target. Sinclair mops it up. Hill under some pressure. Back to Higgins. Scrambles it away, but Murphy on the wing takes the ball. Even Higgins is back in defence. And 50. And 50. Third one of the quarter. Sorry, two late in the first quarter. Murphy, who has just one goal in AFL football, has a lot of time to think about this. Goals at a premium so far today. So a deep breath for Nathan Murphy. Just on half time. <coughs> and we don't even need to say it. <laughs> mm. it's been, yeah, they've just they've been sloppy in the front half, Colin, with their execution, whether it be a shot at goal or certainly that kick going inside 50. Sinclair out wide. Murphy's out there as well as Frampton. Ball off hands. Butler gave it up. Burns caught. Dispossessed. Didn't hit his toe. Ball. Josh Dacos in pretty good hands to hit a target. He sits it up in hope. Can Johnson get the run at it? Big fist come. Hits the deck. My check. Caught by Wilkie. Was he jumped on in the tackle? He's okay. Not in the back. Ball up. But a great spot for a ball up here. With 40 seconds left. My check gets up slowly. Frampton, Marshall. Ball flick down towards Hunter Clark. He couldn't get there to trap it. It's in the congestion again. The umpires are all circling. Ball. St Kilda's ball. With a matter of seconds left in the half. Pies and Saints both two goals in this quarter as they both produced in the opening term. Just the extra behind for Collingwood in this quarter is the gap in the game. It's, oh, Owens, it's a slender one. Higgins, 15 seconds. Is that enough for Collingwood? Maybe. The day crosses. Now Noble. Hill stays down. There's a bit of body work going on on my check. It's ticked off by the umpire. A nervous moment for the Saints fans there as Hill was closing quickly, but not quickly enough. It's a low-scoring affair. Jordan Degoe, a late out for Collingwood, and they've already lost Daniel McStay, unfortunately. So they really are without some of their best manpower. The Saints have had that difficulty all year. And as we know, unbeaten so far. They find themselves just one point behind. Sarah's going to have a chat to Scott Pendlebury in a couple of moments. In fact, it looks like she's ready for him now. Certainly are Anthony Hudson, Scott Discipline needs to be really big in this second half. Both teams are so switched on defensively. Is that an area to look at? Uh, yeah, we just want to make sure our pressure stays high. So I know in the first quarter it was really good. And, um, yeah, I think we'd be happy with the way the game's going. We've just got to clean up our ball use going inside 50. Their backs are, are really good at marking the ball. So we just need to be a little bit more off-centre with our kicks to, to take those guys out of it. It's a typical Ross line coach game. And St Kilda are on top in clearances. Is that an area you can tighten up? Yeah, always it is. You want to get field, posi uh, field position on a ground like this as well. So we'll look to address that half time. All right, we'll let you get in there. Cheers. Thanks, Sarah.
Well, the Pies and the Bombers take centre stage next week for the trip. Uh, parking last week, they really popped his uh, jugular <laughs> van and he's given the boys a good old-fashioned spray. He's very old school in that regard. But back to this game, it's a good game of football. So there has been kicking mistakes, but it's because of the high pressure from both teams. So Kilda dominated the clearance count of that second quarter, but didn't help their territory much. Collingwood 17-13 inside 50s, but they just couldn't quite execute going inside 50. But... It shows two really good teams on show together. They both bought, bought their pressure game. So looking forward to a big second half. Oh, his game needs what a, a big hanger like that, but I reckon. <laughs> I don't know. It's been defensively structured. We want we, a big hanger. We, we need to show goal. we need to show Brooks and Patrick <laughs> and right. the highlights of the of the game that it can provide. I'm sure we will. Although Ross Lyon coach teams <laughs> do keep scores low. In fact, they've kept teams to 7, 5, 11 and 8 goals this year, St Kilda under Ross Lyon. So I would believe that they, even though they're down by a point, had a great first half. Clark heads toward the top of the 50. Race on to get there. Ball set on its end. Side bottom, a little flick. Higgins quick to get there. Noble right with him. Maynard about to be hunted down from behind. The side bottom. Loops it to McCreary. Open space. He uses it. Takes on Marshall. He knew he had him covered. My check. Stand. So Johnson's forward. Wilson's been activated. The sub, if you haven't heard. Move it on. Play on. About to send this long. Johnson's going to be the leaper if he can get there. He does, but guess who? Wilkie. Same old, same old. Huge yeah. amount of intercept marks. Yeah, he just forced him so well under the ball. Wasn't a great kick, was it? But he's been outstanding, Wilkie. Johnson, a little give back. Now, can they find some sort of rhythm on the way out? Crouch, extended period of waiting. Filippo Outside comes five. up and gives him the option he needed. Play on. Over Moore's head. That's a start. Cordy needed the run, found it in Hill. Markoff was right on his grill, and the ball goes back over the line, disrupted again. See the funny side of it. Beautiful spectacle as the sun starts to go down. Collingwood's lead is one. Frampton, McStay injured in the first. Half of this game, so he's already been subbed out. Sinclair. Dacos and Chris had to get down and dirty. Murphy was ready to give Noble a way out. Good one-on-one -on -one battle, Howard. And Marchek gets ticked off by the umpire. Great muscle from McCreary. Hoskin Elliott out of the square, holding his ground is Johnson. Elliott buzzing around deep. Yeah, he's had to hold that up because there's two extra St Kilda defenders uh, in, in terms of a wingman and also a midfielder pushing hard back to defend. We know Johnson can leap. His run up though was impeded successfully by a couple of Saints. And Mason Wood takes another <laughs> intercept well, mark. How often have we seen this early in the season? Mason Wood as a winger, very good in the air. Again. As is Murphy who gets up there, tries to kill it with the fist, killed it forward because Hoskin Elliott was waiting for it. Oh, he was bumped and got away with it because they didn't tackle him. Had it been a tackle, it was ball, but they bumped him and the ball was not clear. So that doesn't count. Play on and it's a turnover anyway. Howard. To Wilkie. Murphy. Murphy's taken five intercept marks for Collingwood. Wilkie's taken five for St Kilda. The record's ten in a game. Marshall, Wilkie. Out wide, Gresham gets it from Stocker. This is the kick. Cordy stands under it. Murphy came with him. Thumped it down. He knew he had Nick Dacos outside of the boot. He just massaged it wide to McCreary. Spectacular. Then he decided to bounce it off his forehead. Give it to Noble. It's been a little bizarre. Side bottom. In the my check direction. Howard wearing him like a glove. Marshall. Caught. Dragged down by Crisp. Umpire lets it flow. Finally comes out. And Mitchell do something with it. Dacos can. Heads inside 50 through hands. Elliott couldn't do something with it initially. Frampton gets his moment. And a big moment at that. And he blasts wide and blows his line. Nick Dacos asking the question, where was the little handoff? I think Frampton was well entitled to take the shot. But if Nick Dacos calls for the ball, you probably give it to him. <laughs> 
Awkward situation for Wanganeen. Miller, he gets out of it using the left. Owen's always had prime position. Let go, stand. Play on. Takes the time to consider. And then has to work back around. Anything will do now. Stocker. Wanganeen, Malera again. Oh, Clark. Again with each possession, they're looking a little more wobbly. Noble, Pendlebury. Ross. Sinclair, great tag from Crisp. Went unwhistled. Pendlebury had a quick tour of the ground. Ginevan gets thumped to the turf. Brilliantly done by Crouch. Not rewarded by the to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You actually look at it. I know there's been mistakes, but both teams' pressure has been elite. Midfielders get back quickly to support their defence. Good pressure where the ball is each time. Clark had a little piece of it. Mitchell comes in to lock it in there. Ball. It's one of those games that does look like it's going to go down to the wire. Mitchell back pedals. And the Saints get players back in all the holes. Johnson leads wide. It's ignored. Mitchell sits it. My check got up there three deep. Couldn't mark it. Wanganee Malira wing tackled. Back to Hoskin Elliott. Lost it in that congestion. Hoskin Elliott somehow straight up in the air. The mark won't count. Little nudge out. Johnson flicks it back and the Saints content. Can see the behind there. So a couple of things that St Kilda are doing really well. They're defending their back 50. Colin would have had 36 inside 50s for what's that now? 10 shots at goal. So we know that's a strength. Colin would in fact score very well. Uh, per inside 50, number three in the competition this year. And the other one, contested possession, which showed it at half time uh, how well St Kilda are going. Collingwood would have started this quarter really well, Brownie. So obviously a feature of M McRae's uh, discussion at half time. The umpires are right on the short kick, on the initial kick out of defence, and it's just put the Saints out of kilter a couple of times when they've had the play on. They played majority in the front half of Collingwood. Gee, they made that difficult for Mitchell, did Noble. Can the Saints prosper? Filippo doesn't quite get the bounce to his own favour. Moore turns it back Collingwood's way. Pendlebury, the lead from Johnson. Now Chris gets a run. Elliott flings the handball. Point contact, Collingwood. Let's take it high. Ross tries to restrain himself from protesting too much. Jamie Elliott. Tries to work out what he can achieve with the next possession. Six disposals. Hasn't scored yet. Had that shot early in the game. Doesn't think he can take it on. My check was on the same wavelength. Yeah, well done there. He just slipped that guard so the St Kilda defenders had relaxed and looked as if they were going to wait for the long shot. And My check just snuck off at the last moment. Well identified. Good kick. Four single goal kickers for Collingwood so far. There's been no multiples in the game until now. All is quiet. Brody Majacek. He's got it working. Absolutely perfectly. And the Pies lead is nine. It's their biggest advantage in the game. And accuracy is important in our game too. Absolutely it is. Uh, not just in the golf course. Look at this. Look at the smarts here. I love this play. I love the connection. Greg McRae would have loved this. It just need to be smarter, Collingwood. So we spoke about their execution going into Ford fifth in the second quarter. It wasn't up to scratch. Scott Pendlebury identified it talking to Sarah Jones walking off at half time. So clearly that was a message from Craig McRae. Very smart. Wait till the last moment. Defenders relax. There's an opportunity there, Pat. Patience. Just have a bit yeah. of patience, Ben. Let the forward do some work. You can't always just go quick, particularly on that slow play. You do need to allow the forwards to set up, get a block, and just have a bit of patience, but really well executed inside 50. Don't blink to the left. Put it through. Yeah, it did too. Nice draw. That's the lowest score, and this one doesn't win. Marshall floats it wide towards Butler, half held. So Butler yeah. about to send the Saints inside 50. Apparently Hutto drilled into a, a house a few days ago. <laughs> That's not Let a everyone around the <laughs> magnificent Grange <laughs> golf course know, Brownie. That's cool. Top of the square. Caminiti got there from three deep. Couldn't bring the mark down. Quaino, crisp. And getting back. Mason Wood takes another grab. Cuts it off. About to send the Saints back to the top of the 50. Owens is down there. Caminiti's down there. 
Is he going to have a crack from here? He certainly got the range, you would have thought. I thought you were going to say one would there, yeah, Brownie, just to continue <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> In he comes. Loads up. He's got a fair bit on it, but it's to the yeah. near side of the hind. He's going to stabilise here, St Kilda. He needed to play some... Play some football in their front half. Need to turn over here. Front half turnover. They've been very good at that throughout the season. Maynard. Josh Dacos called on. Quick decision to be made. Had some numbers on the wing. Battle took front position. It was good enough. So the ground ball gets, Bernie. We spoke about it early. The Saints were just beating uh, Collingwood at their own game in many ways, getting numbers to the ball, hunting it at ground level. Well, it's turned around 13-4 this quarter. So Collingwood really starting to get on, on top in that way. Wood sweeps in from behind to look for this. Ended up scrapping it with his own teammate. Stockers handball. Butler on the turnaround. Caminiti, yes! No, play on. Or was it? No, he's paid the mark. <laughs> Did he play on, though? Well, I think if one umpire's called touch, the other hasn't. Wow. There has to be a conversation, doesn't there? Didn't call touch. That's not what seven Collingwood players in the vicinity call. <laughs> 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 Sounded like a little bit of dissent as well, coming their way. <laughs> Maybe it's this one here. No. What a moment in this young man's career and his life, in fact. Caminiti, yes! Gets it home. Just his fifth game of AFL football. Hasn't played in a loss yet. And he cuts it back to two points. And to have the composure to do that after that situation, Brown. Sensational. There's an interesting setup here. You identified Hutto. Just Mason Wood came onto the other side. So he went to the attacking side. Normally a winger would stand on the defensive side. So he came around. Windhager obviously won it through there. And Kimberley was good enough to take the mark. But probably created a little bit of confusion for the Collingwood midfielders at that stoppage. And they were able to win that. Well done. Bit of dissent there too from the Collingwood players. <laughs> More than a bit, Ed. Yeah. But spirit of the game there. So contested marks, that's the first one. So there's 14 in the match, the first one that's been taken by either team inside the 450. Umpire lets that go. Cordy thought they were going to recall it, but umpire said no, keep going. It landed inside the circle. Ross caught, dispossessed. Gretchen caught. Josh Dacos spears it. Elliot got there from four deep. Stocker breaks the tackle, looks up. He's got a couple of options short. Crouch being one of them. He's got Windhager out wide. More Storky had thumped it to the ground. He wanted the handball back, but he couldn't get that from Markov and will get a ball in on the wing with two points the difference. And maybe part of gather round will save the best till last. Cordy doing the ruck work, Frampton over the top. Dacos and Sidebottom both looked at each other and the ball eventually made the right call. Now Crisp has to be rather innovative with the kick. Hoskin Elliott, they get to the towards the 50, but that's another out on the full from the boot of Will Hoskin Elliott. Well right done by Battle Air, put pressure on, he's been fantastic as well, along with Cal Wilkie. Patton short, just the required. Megan and Malira. Free kick downfield. It's going to be reversed, yes. Yeah, Murphy. Murphy, Murphy got knocked over behind the plate. McCreary just beyond his distance, but maybe not side bottom if he gets a bit closer. He'll try to empty out the pocket for Elliott. Crouch. Reinforcements. Battle. Windhager. Was that front on contact? No. How many times have we seen today, Bernie, a kick's gone inside the Collingwood Ford 50 and there's been two or three St Kilda yeah. players around and they've just outnumbered all day. There's the one on the boundary line. Could have been an arm contact chop. Yeah, they're very disciplined to run back and support the defence, aren't they? Cordy, Johnson, both got a piece of it. Side bottom collects. Just blasts it back to a good spot. Bobby's under it. Bobby's got it. Yeah, he turned pattern around there. 
Patton lost sight of where the ball was. He was able to turn around quickly, take the mark. Just needs composure here. Go back, kick the goal, whether it be a snap or a drop punt. Just see there, as soon as Patton had to turn around, he was in trouble. Been a fantastic pickup, Bobby Hill. First game with him and Ginevan playing together this afternoon, but he's been filling Ginevan's spot, Ginevan's spot in his struts. Struck it beautifully. And a squeezed inside the post by a coat of paint. <laughs> yes. Well done there. Good job. Just created something out of nothing, but uh, forced the kick out of that stoppage. Good forward craft there. Another score from a stoppage, Brownie. Yeah. We talked about that a couple of times. So they're so good at scoring from stoppages, number one in the AFL so far this season. I love that about gear. Kept moving, Pab. As you know, yeah. playing forward, the most important thing to do with defenders to make yeah. them uncomfortable is get them to take their eyes off the ball. Uh, in that situation, did so good, smart forward craft. Hill comes up to the stoppage, turns his man around quickly. So they've been able to just create a couple of goals out of nothing here. Collingwood, the early one from my check was a good pass inside 50. Time good finish by Bobby Hill. No one doubts his ability. Collingwood, the beneficiaries, as he started so strongly at his new club. Yeah, those intercepts in the front half. Makes it much easier to score. Adams turns, was given the room to do so, and quick to identify McCreary again, who's been important. Really open, yeah, he made a strong lead. There was a passage in front to kick it to. McCreary wasn't confident. So he goes a little longer to the square. Meyer check tonight. Ross trying to make provisions for wherever the ball would bounce. Patton only as far as Quaynor. He gets felled by Butler. Two goals, two to one, one for this term. It's got to hang in here, the St Kilda midfielders. So Collingwood midfielders getting on top. It's playing the game in the Collingwood front half for most of this third quarter. Marshall using the advantage he has. Cordy got displaced by Moore. Before you knew it, Dacos had given it to Pendlebury. And Maynard had thumped it to full forward. And the Saints are on alert again in this impassable St Kilda defender. Cal Wilkie takes yet another mark. Is that six? Ready? Six, yeah. Yeah, tally. four away from the record. Heads out wide. Owens, the meat and the sandwich. Moore got there from four deep. Stand. Mind you, there's seven players that hold the record of 10 minutes. Seven marks, so <laughs> you, Equal, just, you, you just well, rattle them all off for me, we had a... Made out. Johnson. So they're covering that lead to the pocket this time. The Saints defenders not allowing that my check spot that he kicked the goal from. In fact, they've gone through it again. My check's up. And he couldn't quite pluck it. But the set play nearly worked again. Such a good, honest competitor, my check. That's a great launch in the ball. Knew exactly where he had to go. Now, the great news for Collingwood, it's another 450 stoppage where they've looked really dangerous all night. Despite the advantage the Saints should have with the only recognised Ruckman out there, Marshall thumped it. Ginevan. Oh, wild boot. I've seen a few of those this weekend. No damage. Hasn't quite been for Ginevan so far. Ross Lyon with all his experience and expertise. Working Thanks, overtime on the phones. Well, he's wary with Scott Pendlebury just floating around these Ford 50 <laughs> stoppages. Don't think Ross was talking to Josh Dacos. Free kick is going to the Ruckman in Marshall. Just like Gill wasn't talking to the Premier earlier this day. Uh, well, the announcement that's here, gather round for the next three years, if you weren't with us earlier on for that announcement. It's been such a success this season. Out wide. Burns throws us tucked away. My checks talking it, bending it, and not goaling it. Battle got back, last line of defence, and just got a set of knuckles on it. Quick re-entry, that's how it was the required. Outside five. Outside five. 13 to 5 inside 50s in favour of Collingwood this quarter. Desperately need to spend some time in their forward half here, St Kilda, just to relieve the pressure. Again, uncertainty on the way out. Almost a collective mark for the Saints, but it's a Collingwood mark. 
Johnson prevailed. Multiple hands over it, goes short. Wilson activated sub. Thumps it into the pocket again. Mychek was able to jump both feet and he almost brought it down. That could have gone anywhere. Windhager with the clean up. Issues for Ross. Oh. Big issues. Ball squirts out. Just with the kicks inside 50, Pad, they've been able to get deep entries yeah. this quarter, so it's making it really difficult for St Kilda's defenders to get it out. We just got layers of defence in. I mean, that pressure. So the first layer of defence was three Collingwood players just ambushing the ball carrier. Johnson trying to do it. His own steam out of the ruck. And then the second and third layers are just set up behind the ball so well because you've got so much pressure in at the source and you're able to position well behind the ball and it's almost impossible to get it out of there. Edge of the seat staff at the moment. Wangani Malira goes wide. Stand. Patton looks around. Did not have one look inside, so the plan is obviously to stick down the line. Caminiti tried to get there late. Wood couldn't get a kick away. Big pack around it. Umpire circling again. And again, the Saints have kept teams to seven goals, five goals, 11 goals, and eight goals this season. They don't leak big scores under Ross Lyon. Marshall with the fist. Knocked it straight down to Wilson, though. Dacos of the Nick variety gave it to Noble. Caught by Burns, an umpire thinks the ball up is in order. It's great pressure, isn't it, from the Saints? So Collingwood asked the question, can you go with us? Can you match our, our intensity? Really nice response from a couple of small forwards laying some big tackles. Took three to bring Marshall down. I'm down. Had the luxury of being able to save him off late last week. Knowing what was ahead. And Pies, of course, played last Thursday night. Players were able to have four days off after that defeat at the hands of Brisbane. Get refreshed for this contest. Stocker found that going tough. He did pretty well under the circumstances. Crouch with a creative handball. Windhager once, twice, no a third time that he could fend and keep McCreary at bay. Mitchell got clobbered high. Is he the best tackler in the competition, no, no, McCreary? No, if he's no, not, he'd be right no, up, right no, up there. No. A great goal Moving to get Collingwood moving Moving at the start of the game. Tom Mitchell to half forward. Hoskin Elliott threatened. Almost dragged it down. Filippo again off the left boot. Not such a wise kick. Nick Dacos to set up another forward thrust. Elliott denied. And now maybe the Saints can set something up. Gresham hasn't been a big player so far. But there's still time for that. Burns to the outside, the extreme outside, and Moore bundles it over. And still they can barely get it in their front half. 15 to 5 for the quarter, including the last nine. There's your inside 50s list. There's plenty of room over the back for the Saints, but they just can't get it over the back. Johnson, Marshall edges him out. Pendlebury, hands and knees. Marshall on his backside. The Umpire to sort it out again. Talked about time in four and a half. Well, yeah, well over 75%. This quarter has been in the Collingwood forward half. Frampton with the reach. Secondary thump on straight to Josh Dacos. Hands it to Maynard. On the back step. Still got a bit on it. And battle didn't hold it long enough to be paid the mark. Gets a kick anyway. It's a floater. And the chaos ball might work. Butler's got it. There is space, but there's no one in the space to kick to. He has to delay it. It's got Higgins just off the bench, fresh, buzzing past. He ignores that. Spears at top of the square. Quainor was there to try and crush it away. No mark's been paid. It's been a couple of times the umpires had the option. Owens looks up and says, I thought I had that. The umpire said, no, I'll have it. Thank well, you. That's the point of the fourth umpire now. The closer to the action in the forward line. Murphy waits back in the square at the bottom of your screen. Tight call. Can they get a quick kick out of here? Clark was run down. Clever from Ross. Patton. Markov got a shove. 
Wood, a skip, a jump. Couldn't finish it. Wilson dug in. Maynard. McCreary had two pies on the inside. Found them. Ginevan. Same mode. Barely a possession. Suddenly they're at half forward. And threatening. Majacek, Johnson, Ginevan. They keep on coming. Oh. Ginevan again. Hill. Both hills are there. One for either team. Stocker, Sinclair, a standoff. Wilkie, part of everything, staving off just about every Collingwood entry. And now, oh, he'll have to turn back. Quick detour. How's that for an aggressive kick? High stakes in the middle of the Adelaide Oval. Ross, Clark, and then a brick wall. They fight through. Clark again to half forward. Wood, time, space. And a teammate. finish the Saints finally find a way to get through and Anthony Caminiti has been their source of goals in this quarter I don't know, they were spare St Kilda players out the back it was just a matter of whether they were going to be able to hold up through the centre there Collingwood's defenders came forward really aggressively which they know they do and nearly nearly saved the day there just through here so they come forward really aggressively there's the tackle but that tackle needs to be held Higgins was out the back, so Gresham was out the back, and then Wood picked the right option. Where did it come? Where did it, it start? It started in defensive 50, where St Kilda had a seven on three when the ball went inside. Yeah. They had to be patient and wait a little bit, but that aggressive kick through the middle opened everything up, and eventually they got out the back. And that's the vision that Colonel Light had. Well, not to have a football ground here, of course, but that's the hill that he's standing on. <laughs> well, maybe he'd fit very much out around. Markov, he sends it long, goal square. My check got up there, couldn't take the mark, and the left door's closed. We'll get a ball up. Headed the Colonel back for it, one. I think he it would have been a port man, surely, because he came in <laughs> down the port. Came in on the Port River. <laughs> From the ball up, Marshall <laughs> bangs it away. I think the Crows were in town when he first arrived. <laughs> Josh Dacos, he loads up from outside 50, a spear. It was touch play on. Howard feeds it over. Wanganee Malera with some poise. He's got Owens and three Collingwood players out there. Plainor gives it to a good delivery man. Nick Dacos mesmerised them all again and found Pendlebury. McCreary floats it up, goal square. Battles there and Wilkie crushed it across the line. Precision on the way out, at least on the short. Patton, 2 5 to 2 1 for the quarter for Collingwood. 19 inside 50s to 7. Moore's been so hard to penetrate on that outer side. Burns made a pretty good fist of it. It might turn St Kilda's way, no. Just away from Brad Crouch. They've done well, really, Hutto. It'll be only four points down, so Kilda, again, continues that trend of being hard to score against this season. 19 inside 50s, Collingwood, this quarter. The two goals, five. So hitting the scoreboard, but just not quite getting the results they need. Marshall, good service down to Ross. Pendlebury. Elliott now crisp. Rare space and latitude and delivers for Johnson. At the point of the 50. Scott Penbury's been sensational this quarter. This is his ninth disposal. Four contested. He's had two clearances. So he's been around the football a lot there. He's able to put Crisp into space. Great kick this one, though. The kick inside 50 off your line. Instead of going the predictable kick down the line. Look at that. Changed the angle. Confused the defence. Made his debut here last year. Kicked a couple of goals that afternoon. It's got Pendlebury's 350th. Hasn't so far tonight. It's not really looking like working back. Yet another blemish for the Pies at that end. 6'10 now to 6'4. Accuracy hasn't been a problem really for either side this year. Until now. See if the Saints can go coast to coast in a minute. Or they attempt to go coast to coast in a minute. Try and Tied the scores at the last change, which would be an appropriate stage set. Josh Dacos to Nick Dacos to Pendlebury. Class to class to class. 
when it comes to using it. It's in good hands now for the entry kick, although to Quainor. Stand. See if they go to that my check lead pocket, which is an option the Saints have shut down a little. Seconds keep ticking. They do head to that my check pocket, and my check got there. But too late. It was on the full. So everybody knows the game plan now, including the Saints. And the boundary umpire was right on the spot. Last 25 seconds. Will they try and just see it off? Or will they see if they can catalyst for some sort of move forward? Gonna keep it wide and as safe as possible. Camerini flew, but so too did more to send it Collingwood's way. You can see the look of exasperation on Pendlebury's face as soon as he released the handball. Misbehaving ball on the outer wing. Pendles tries again this time. Finds a teammate. Crisp runs the ground, but not before Dacos came in. And deep again, but it's Howard's end. And he takes the mark, and the siren is going to sound to end another quarter where goals have been at a premium. Two goals to each team in each of the three quarters so far. It's the extra behinds that sees Collingwood lead by six. The end of gather round is near, and we're coming to an exciting climax in the city of churches next. Disneyland here in Adelaide all weekend. Fantasyland if you're a football fan, and maybe, maybe the footy gods are setting this up nicely for the biggest of big finishes between two genuine contenders. It's the only time these two teams meet in this home and away season. They look finals bound, both of them. And it comes down to this one quarter of football to sort it out, to kick the difference. Ball knocked down immediately to Adams. Crisp, calling with the clearance. See if they can grab some early momentum. Bobby Hill feeds it inside. Ginneman. Will he take his moment? He does. Welcome back, Jack. Bobby Hill, thank you, Bow. Just so smart. I mean, set of, set of clearance is going to be crucial in this last quarter. So Collingwood midfield, well done on that occasion. But just the smarts from Hill here. Reads the situation so well. He was trying to get it to him before he actually had an opportunity to get there. Underground kick, and that's a classy finish. Absolutely. Really dangerous combination, Ginnivan yep. and uh, Bobby Hill together. They can work in tandem like this. Um, they're both capable of kicking, you know, their 40 goals a year, no doubt about it. If they can have that sort of chemistry and combination, that was fantastic. They were able to capitalise from clearance. They dominated that part of the ground in the third quarter, but didn't necessarily hit the scoreboard. He'd be happy to be back in the team, Ginnivan. He's been a good contributor today. Easy to forget, 40 goals last year. What a season he had. And back now, and it'll be fascinating to see how they do combine. Elliot down there as well. Saints there to respond, and swiftly, Sinclair well aware. It wasn't the perfect kick, but it gave Butler and then Owens a look at it. Back it goes to Butler as the Collingwood circle closed around him. Ball still there. Umpire not inclined to blow the whistle yet. Again, the Dacos is in penalty part of the chain, and Hill Dad. allows the pause. For the pies before they go forward again. Move it on. Play on. He looked inside, heads down the line in the end, and my check, middle of the pack. He looks inside. First look was inside. He's been really good, especially since McStay's gone down. Nothing was on offer so wide to Josh Dacos, and every Saints player folds back ahead of him to fill the gaps. Sends it along. Will Hoskin Elliott get up? He does! Almost pulled it down and then had it stolen from his grasp last second. It's been good, though. Since half-time, especially, Collingwood have been able to go long into the goal square. So there's saying Cordy yeah. there on the bench. So Bytel about to come into the action. Marshall was losing his footing, but didn't lose his head. Got the tap to Wanganeen Malera. So there's another tall player out of the match. This could almost be the shortest teams we've seen for quite some time. Don't have a problem with that. Frampton has a wrestle. You get Marshall it dumped it to the outside. My check. Crisp from the corner. Didn't try it on. Ginevan and Hill. Oh, Hoskin Elliott went for the big specky. Wasn't far off the mark either. Now the Saints need to be clinical. Wilkie. 
Murphy is terrific then. Came forward to defend. Yeah, another futile kick on the way out. Nick Dacos. Johnson Majacek. All I had to do was sort out who was going to take it. And the man in front was Ash Johnson. I love Murphy there. It was fantastic. Just came, left his man, came forward yeah. to defend, made a quick decision. That was the reason for the turnover. And I would go back inside 50 to the 2v1. He's had a good night, hasn't he, Murphy? Yeah, he's been fantastic. Yeah. A lot of intercept marks as well. Johnson has a third attempt. This for a game-high 18-point lead. A couple of steps, that's all he needed. Arms in the air in triumph. The Pies aren't far away from bouncing back from last week's loss. Oh, what a job it's going to be for St Kilda now. Makeshift forward line for the Pies has done the job. At the other end, probably just haven't quite had enough opportunities. He was fantastic here. We spoke about this, Murphy. So just look at him. His ability to come forward there. We know Justin Lepage is his defensive coach. Lepage played a very similar yep. style, perhaps. Sometimes you think maybe a bit reckless, <laughs> leaving his man. But uh, that's what they're encouraged to do. And he's a beautiful kick, Johnson, as well. Very accurate, though. Yeah, very accurate. But and this is we saw this to start the uh, the third term, didn't we? Collingwood certainly getting on top, uh, winning clearance, contested possession in their forward half, just couldn't execute. But gee, they've started this last quarter incred incredibly well. 17 to four disposals. They're right on top. Saints need a hero in a hurry. Frampton flicks it out. Collingwood could smell blood here. Sinclair had a stolen from him by Adams. The side bottom to Nick Dacos, to Noble, running off half back. They are inspired right now. Ginnivan turns outside, rolls it to Johnson, pokes the pass to Elliott, gets up, spills it. Marshall mops it up. Howard out wide. He needs Higgins to get up there. He does, flicked away. Noble crumbs it. Front and square, drives it long. My check, crash to the deck. Battle got there. Gave it up to Wilkie, thumps it back. Quainall gets up and holds a good one. They just can't get past. We've seen that so often. Wobbly from Quainall, but it gives their forwards an opportunity. Wilkie didn't finish it. Oh, did he get ridden into the ground? No. And again, guys, Nick Dacos has had 34 disposals and 703 metres gain. He's a star. Yeah, phenomenon. He said, I'll check. Just politely inquiring as maybe why he didn't get some sort of free kick for that. Gets slowly to his feet, but now has to spring back into action. Marshall, Majic, again he goes to ground. Same call. Let's have a look at these Collingwood small forwards. There's a number of them. There's Majic. And that bottom left hand of your screen buried into the, the deck. See these forwards get to work, though. Just need to be very careful here, St Kilda. It's his side bottom's working. Just see him inside 50. We get the right on the left hand side there. He's lurking, looking very dangerous. Dacos is at the back as well. St Kilda need to be high alert. There's only so much this St Kilda defence can stand. And Johnson, Hill, summed it up. It's a procession now, and it's going to take some stopping. And all the pies want to get in on the act. And Bobby Hill is thriving. In this Collingwood Guernsey, it's a four-goal advantage. Yeah, just sheer weight of numbers now, Pat. Yep. Floodgates are starting over. 59 to 34, the inside 50 count. So St Kilda's defence has done well to hang in there. But really, it's just been so many forward 50 clear um, stoppage yep. situations now where Collingwood can set up behind the ball and eventually... What about Brody Bocek? Sure. You know, I mean, just throwing his... I mean, he's just he's had his head buried into yeah. the ground and then he gets up and throws his body back at it and creates that goal by sheer will. And that's uh, three for Bobby Hill. They went, they went all over to my check. He, that's the spirit that you like to see. Good good goal for Hill, but brilliant that uh, they all went across to my check. 6-6 six, six, six morning against Collingwood. So four goals in 16 minutes. It's been done before, but hasn't been a lot of goals in this game. Collingwood inspired right now. Adams kick, touch play on. Play on. Marshall just blasts it forward. Kick in hope. Little flick back from Windhager. A little bit over speculative. Nick Dacos, Josh Dacos. All the poise in the world to Mitchell. Back to Quainor. Back to Mitchell. 
feeds it further on. Slick hands. Nick to Josh. The Dakai working well together again. Marshall. He wobbles it back, hoping for Owens, and gets him. This is the moment to play their way back into it. Ton of time. Just needs to use it wisely. Hill. Will he go back? Yeah, he needs to own this. Has to go back and kick this goal. Just to keep St Kilda in the contest. Only had the one touch since half time, Bradley Hill. Only the 10 disposals for the match, so it's been a pretty quiet performance. He's been running hard and getting to some positions, but butchered the ball a number of times going forward. I just haven't really had any connection, have they, in the second half? Takes a deep breath. Spears it towards goal, and he misses to the near side. It's certainly been a resurgence under Ross Lyon for Brad Hill yeah. and obviously coaching over at Fremantle Pav, but he's getting the best out of or getting the best version of Brad Hill that we've seen in past years. Yeah, Brad's really struggled, has he, in some Bring ways in. the last Bye couple on. of seasons, but getting back there to his best. Yeah, he was probably better last year than he'd been the previous few, but yeah, so many Saints seem to be thriving, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do, yeah. Under Ross. Well, Mason Wood's a great example yeah. of that. You know, he's had to show some signs late last year, but he's got another level. Well, who's going to take it on here for the Saints? It has to be a collective effort, of course, but maybe someone to ignite them. They'll need at least four goals from here. Crouch, who kicked the first of the night. Clears Maynard. Burns can dribble it. Owens hasn't had a big say yet. Markov. Windhager. Butler. Hill. This time more instinctive snap, but the same result. Danger averted for now. More. Points long, so does that mean he's going to go long? Move it on. Play on. Yeah, it's true to his way. He's an honest kind of guy. <laughs> Frampton is target. And plucked at the front by Battle. But this is the kick. Can they find someone to mark it inside 50? Owens is down there. Quainor gets there. Made it his own. About eight steps out. Heads out wide to Ginevan. Hill tries to shut him down, runs past it, so no man on the mark. Shorts it to Hoskin Elliott, comes down on one knee and collects. Looks around to see what he's got on offer. With the time clock and the scoreboard now in their favour. Chip kick, Mitchell takes it. He can take as much time as he likes as well. Really happy to take the speed off the yeah. game now. Thank yes. you. You feel like St. Kilda's only chance is if the speed stays high in the game and they can create some turnovers. Just a glimpse of a chance for Burns. Kept his feet, which is important, but Murphy refused to be denied. All beaten. Oh, Dacos just dropped that down. Not under a tackle. Now it's a ball up. He's just desperate, isn't he, Murphy? You can see he plays with a level of spirit and desperation that you'd love to play with. Throws his body at it. Oh, reads the play well behind the ball. So important to Collingwood's defence. Convenient time for some changes there on the bench. Mitchell, clever to side bottom. Early leap from Hill. Hunter became the hunted, but he gets himself clear as Clark and to the outside again. It's just hope more than anything. Filippo stood his ground, but then the mass has arrived and it's over and out of bounds. He's haven't been able to get freed all St. Kilda today. Look at those small forwards, really dangerous small forwards today. Really haven't been able to get out with much space at all every time they've been there. It's been a Collingwood defender or multiple Collingwood defenders in their vicinity. Two rucks dance their way past the ball. Umpire said you're both holding, blame them both equally. It's really both teams have, have struggled to find momentum. It's only the last, uh, I'd say, probably what, 25, 30 minutes of this entire game where the Collingwood team have just really got on top. I'm going to need kick smothered. Lance for Crouch. Wobbles it towards half forward. Owen's under it. Can't quite reach it, but it rolls. To the boundary. The Saints at breaking stray, but not broken yet. Well, they have 15 smothers to two. Collingwood's been mm. fantastic. That's a huge number. So just shows your mindset and your intent. It's been fantastic all day from both clubs, really, but especially Collingwood. They would have been disappointed after quarter time last week. Owens ripped out of the air, took the ruck. Kick was smothered. Mitchell, side bottom side of the boot. Through hands. Bobby Hill stalking it. They're a breaking strain. Can they break them? Hoskin Elliott, Wilkie, Wilkie gets there, Hoskin Elliott corrals him, heads out wide, Hill is in space, if it sits he can go, it's sat, 
and he goes. And Bytel takes the mark. Let's hope he has more luck as the activated sub than he did last week. He came on and then suffered what looked to be a pretty serious injury. Remarkable recovery from that ankle. Sub again today. Half forward again more. It was an obstacle, but Hill to Crouch. He takes the gift to Burns. Quick snap. Got himself clear up to try and make sure of it, but failed. And it's hard to watch for Ross Lyon. That's much better build-up, though, wasn't it? Win the ball across your half-back line, move it quickly, change the angle, come back inside, take the game on, four to centre, just could not execute. That's three misses in a row. The kick-in extraordinaire, Nick Dacos takes off, runs his full measure. My check direction. And two Saints combine to spill it, Patton. And Burns and get a ball in. So here's another example. I mean, St Kilda at a stoppage. Will they pull away? Will they try to open up the front? Because they do need to get a score here with only 11 minutes to go. Or they continue to play a short forward structure. You can see there a little bit of space ahead of the ball. No ruck. Frampton just knocks it to the front. The Saints were ready. Crouch freed the hands. And Botel walks it over for them to reset. This time to have a ruckman. Owens comes up to do that. Marshall is on the bench at the moment having a rest. Looking to get back out there because they do need to find something. Just up the end here a little. Owens, Frampton prevailed to Mitchell, the handoff to side bottom. Screwed it back in the my check. Hoskin Elliott direction. Wangani Malira. McCreary almost got another. It had the same effect. Nick Dacos to Mitchell. Another forward handball. Burns couldn't stop it. Elliott had a fumble. And Patton was able to get there and intervene and send it back St Kilda's way. Can they find a clear path forward? No 50. We're going to take some risks down through the centre, St Kilda. They're just too well set up behind the ball, Collingwood. So Butler hits the half forward more. Get in there, Philip from three deep. Knocked it down to Owens. Big kick this to Hill. And he fumbles it. Looks inside. Philippo, the target, thumped away from him. Ginneman lending a hand in defence. Slick hands, crisp. Got it up just in time. Wilson, playing up. Ball rolling to the outer side. Bobby Hill, the boundary line was his friend. Markov, he wants to keep it alive and keep rolling. Little toe poke. Three Saints around him. He's over it. He's lost it. Handball from Bytel. Saints no time is of the essence now. They need to take it on. Great smother Noble. Body on the line. Battle. Whose kick was smothered, holds it up in the area, and will get another ball up. But there's still 10 minutes left. Really a world record of smothers in Collingwood today. Really an outstanding to watch. 21 points between them. Feel the urgency from the Saints. Crouch. Hill. Just had to do the best he could to get it forward. Two pies had command in the air. Higgins left under 10 and he just needed a split second. Oh, Philippo, spinning, spinning. Did he get his bearings? No. Still dizzy. And another behind the fourth. I said they had to kick four goals. Maybe they only need three. Burns there, top of screen. Of that little uh, picture down the bottom of your screen. He was all free. The spin was so good, though. <laughs> Probably entitled to take the shot, but Burns was there. On. Play on. And just keep eye on Nick Dacos, guys. Yeah. His career best is 40. He's on 39 disposals as we speak. Howell got up there. Thanks, Eddie. Good tackle. Is it high tackle? Contact. High contact. McCreary pleads his case. Crouch. will go and get it. It's been a ridiculously good start. To Nick Dacos's career. He does it every week now, consistently. Ball towards the middle. Filippo had it, lost it. Marshall trying to handle through legs. That didn't work. Adams went low. Hunter Clark went low. Adams was tackled. That's ball. So they get a chance here, the Saints. Wood. Still eight minutes left. But again, time is of the essence. Fans it wide. Sits it up. Get him it. Taps it to his own advantage. He's got it now. Stocker stalks. Get him around his body. Elliot dances his way. Pass Wilkie for the knockout blow. Over. Some brilliance to end it. 
Well, he's had a tough day. He's been banged up a couple of times, uh, Jamie Elliott, but I think he'd be happy that Ginnivan's back in the side as well. Ginnivan's been terrific with his uh, defensive pressure. So he'll be hit the scoreboard as well, along with Bobby Hill. Great closing speed, wasn't it? Yeah. He, he read the cue very well. You can see the same kill the team were trying to come back and board, change the direction of the ball and, and take it up the field. But really smart from Ginnivan. And then a nice little step to come back inside to your numbers. And this is a great finish, isn't it? <laughs> Slots it in. Yeah, just weighted numbers. So 62 41, the inside 50 count in favour of Collingwood. Just been able to get over the top of St Kilda now. Been sharp today, so 17 smothers. Uh, not a stat we speak about a hell of a lot, but uh, that's the most by any team this season. So a really good defensive attitude. Saints are going to die wondering. Ross, in between two Saints, amazingly, scooped it out. Burns will take a pot shot. And doesn't have any more luck than any of his mates. They've had their chances, haven't yeah. they, St Kilda? So four points in that one. In this last quarter, Collingwood so efficient when they go inside their Ford 50. Bytel's on the move at the front. Owens did his best in the follow-up. Wood, battle of strength with Josh Dacos. There's no winner. Collingwood have looked better with the Ruckman today. So Billy Frampton's gone in there. Hasn't had to play as a key defender. I think they'll continue with that experiment going forward just while their injury stocks are cruel with the ruck. Ross thought about it, now regrets that he didn't give claim for holding the ball. It'll be interesting, won't it, Barry, because you know, they'll, they'll play teams that are much taller in their forward yeah. half as compared to yeah. St Kilda, yeah. so really have to be um, called upon to go back. you got uh, McStay with a... How injury. How injury, McStay with his finger injury, which if it is a significant tendon uh, issue, then that's a long period out. I think Quainor, they, they're confident enough that Quainor could play on a third tall forward. Yeah. Murphy's been very good today. Obviously, Darcy Moore's there. Play on. And just playing the percentages here, Tom, off the clock. Staying wide. Nick Dacos, Josh Dacos. Wilson didn't read the memo. Kept it alive. Crisp wobbles it towards the wing. And it stays alive for my check. Feeds it back. Frampton inside handoff to Mitchell to Josh Dacos, whose instinct is to keep playing on to advantage. And the mark taken by Howard yet earlier for competition, and he had the reach. Six and a half minutes remaining in the battle of the interceptors. It's an early whistle. Now it gets to centre half back with Sinclair. The directions were to take it wider. Instead, he bit off perhaps a little more than he should have. And you can see the result. It just hasn't quite happened when it's mattered today for St Kilda. It has been a terrific start to the season, but defeat seems inevitable. They lost round one last year to Collingwood, then won the next six in a row. We know it all came asunder in the back half of the year. Burns is Worked tirelessly all day, but he leaves that behind. Noble to Pendlebury, who's old enough to have played eight games at Footy Park, as well as eight here at the Adelaide Oval. And now they work to the near side. Wilson puts it into the pocket, but it's intercepted again. It's that my check pocket, but they all know the plan now. St Kilda might as well lead there themselves. Stocker, Sinclair, Mark Paid held it long enough, flicks it wide, so Burns and Hill, Hill short pass, Filippo feeds it off, Ross can't waste any time now, heads long, Quain or Owens, he's done it, push! Uh, used the forearm and got a little bit of side with the back push perhaps. Had a bit of a tougher day, hasn't he, Mitch Owens? Uh, it was so good last week, obviously, but the delivery inside Ford 50 plus only 45 inside 50s hasn't really allowed him an opportunity to get into the game. Yeah, you would have thought memory will come back in next week. So a lot of upside for St Kilda. Yep. Jack Steele looks like he'll be available next week next as well. Week, yep. So two important inclusions. But, you know, you're not going to be able to go deep into September without a key forward. Yep. Um, so hopefully King will be back soon as well. Equal his PB with 40 disposals, Nick Dacos. 
Yeah, Max King still listed at five to seven weeks away. Side bottom going hard. The wrong way. More back through centre half back. Mitchell. Lots of land to run on for Hill. And we know he loves a chase. Skids it to half forward. Mighty eventually picked it up and delivers for Elliott full chested. Left the footy behind. Clark with the tidy up operation. Murphy's crook. Yeah. Beyond play. Cross to Wood. Back that in a moment. He's a bit wobbly too, I know. Might give the Saints a chance because it's about to enter his domain. Owens tempted. And did it hit the fat bit? Or did it just sneak through? Yeah, Nathan Methods is coming off now, guys. I didn't Don't see what happened, but he was on the ground for a while. The ball, the post, please check. Review underway. Really like the umpire here to, to make a, a call on this one. He's right there, isn't he, Hunter? No, he said it's a behind. He said it's a I did? Okay, okay. Yeah, so there's the a soft call is a behind, yeah. but he's gone for the... So there's a fatter bit behind the post where the flags yeah. stick into. It's actually... It's almost behind the post. What about on Friday night yeah. where the uh, the wrapping was hanging right. loose? Yeah. And it hit the wrapping. Well, they've done the flies up. Review complete. This Looking time. at these angles, we can see there is a spike on edge as the ball passes the post. Decision on the scoreboard. A feather touch. We want to get it right. I understand that. The umpire right in the position to get it right. So, well done. Yeah, a hard man pass. I like it. Yeah, this is interesting. That High that standards, Hutto. High yeah. standards. That is fatter behind the post there, that bit with the flags go into. That, that is a little <laughs> bizarre, that anomaly, though. So kick it to the right post then, Dwayne? Well, case. no, just don't put the flags stuck behind. Because if it hits the flag, it's a behind as well. There's only one flag on the right post. <laughs> High leap from my check. And, well, there was a cue, but he had his name on the door. Yeah. Half back. Yeah, he's been terrific since half time, my check. Really since the stay injury. Which was at quarter time, I think. Josh Dacos back inside, and they can take some more seconds off the clock as this Collingwood chant starts ringing around the Adelaide Oval to finish gather round. Impact of the Murphy injury is going to be interesting. Obviously not today, but just speaking about Billy Frampton's look good in the ruck. Collingwood look better with a ruckman, the Sachin Frampton, but now they're getting an injury to. Murphy and he's unavailable. That certainly hurts their key position stocks. They're going down all over the place, aren't they? Jeremy House still a fair way off. Noble to half forward. Plucked out of there by Marshall. Play on or it would have been 50. Tumbled a little kick cleverly to Ross who decided to keep on going. Why not? Hill couldn't get into his stride. Clark Crouch to Gresham. In a quiet day for him, just seven disposals. Mangane Malera. Now Mason Wood. Thought about the long, took on the short. And Maynard with the infraction there. Free kick is going to a saw Higgins. And Braden doesn't agree with it, but does he ever? Just going back on the Murphy, so Anzac Day. He's the next clash, of course, yeah. next Tuesday. Um, yeah. It's going to be massive, isn't it? Bombers, huge upset yesterday over Melbourne. I suppose the Bombers don't have a necessarily big forward line, so they might be able to get away with it. But... Been a tougher afternoon for Jack Higgins, but he still remembers how to kick a goal. Cuts the margin back to 19 points. But they know. Here's what you were talking about earlier with Murphy. Oh, good push and show. Kennedy. Certainly rattled him. Readers at yes. home to work out what he was we'll have that up warning. Social media at some stage. Yes. Again, they don't meet again this home and away season, but they might well meet in the finals when that gets raised again. Well, it might get raised again this week. It might. The MRO and the tribunal if it gets appealed, which most do these days. 70 plays, 51. Marshall climbs. 
Crouch filled. Get a chance to get a little consolation prize here, the Saints. Spears it long. Down by Markov. Ross flicks it out. Butler. A little paddle to his own advantage, then his disadvantage. Wood wheels around on his left. Struck that pretty well. But not quite well enough. So nine clearances, Brad Crouch. Solid performance, 32 disposals. 16 of those contested. Nine inside 50s. The goal himself. Noble with the re-entry. Caught up to them in behind. 10-10 to 7-10. Marshall, towering figure, still takes the mark. Owens, Filippo knew exactly where to give it to Burns. Dribbles it through. And now it's back to 12. Surely not. Well, it's still Possibly. One Possibly. minute Why not? and 11 seconds, Duano. Centre square bounce hasn't been their, their strength really today, but you just never know, Brownie. You never know. Never know. Could they? Yeah. Could they? You saw uh, Draw. One, of, one of the last clearances. Crouch has been on fire today. So can he get another centre bounce clearance? He's had four himself. And then Burns is a terrific runner. Frampton's in the middle for Collingwood to do the ruck work. But they're trying to work out who's going to ruck for St Kilda, so it's not Marshall, it's got to be Owens. So Owens to do the ruck work, which is a little strange. Do you stay down and just shark the tap here, Dwayne? So Frampton gets up. One minute left. Dumps it into space. Sinclair pounces. Hunter Clark came off half back and was free and sends it toward Caminiti and Quainor. Ball comes up to Crouch. He gets a chance at goal. Oh. And guess oh. what? <laughs> Can you believe it? 51 seconds left. Well, there's time. We've got to get Marshall back out there, surely. Well, it doesn't matter. Don't need him in there. <laughs> really smart play here, just back to the ball. Sometimes, you, as a small forward, you can get caught going away, but go back to the ball. It's a first give. Hunter Clark, we talked about it. You're know, bolting off half back, but that's what you've got to do when you're in win the game situation. Collingwood trying to save the game now. All their wingmen, or both wingmen, have pulled right back to the right-hand side of screen. It's been a big day, Brad Crouch. Yeah, he's been good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's not impressed. Craig McRae, they're the kings of the big steal last year. Collingwood, the roles to be reversed. 51 seconds. Owens restrained. Play on the call. The hottest of balls in the middle. They're clear. Clark to Sinclair. Bit by bit until Maynard. Takes the safe mark. Ross Lyon has a laugh. A laugh. <laughs> Plays it wide. They've got to get a man. Got to get a man each. 28 seconds. Eight Chris seconds. plays traffic cop. They need it on the wing. They've got to win it back. The draw is probably the best they can get. Howard is going to give them a shot. Crowd on their feet. Is there a late St Kilda mark? No. Elliot, a blind hand. Absolutely chaotic. More. They close. They close. And the siren is nigh. They're going to need a bicycle kick out of mid area. They're going to need a free kick. Oh, what a scare. And Gather Round finishes with a Magpie victory. A very big fright late delivered by the Saints. But the Magpies have prevailed. And Anzac Day is going to be massive. What a weekend of football it's been. And in the end, the Pies get home by six. Free kick paid late to Owens. What did you think? 
Yeah, well, I'd love to see the replay again, which we will we'll show you. There's Daniel McStay, who we went off, subbed out of the game with a hand injury. Here's this, replay. this replay, Brownie. Let's have a look if there is high contact, is there? Maybe not. No, they let those ones go now. Maybe not. Fair but enough. Great performance from St Kilda. Really defensive style of game. You know, not a huge amount of points kicked by either team, but uh, Collingwood really seemed, in particularly in that second half, the, the, the team, the better team on the night. But uh, you know, the, the Saints would definitely take a lot out of that, uh, that uh, loss as well. Let's get down to Sarah Jones with one of the stars of the match. An absolute star. I've got Nick Dacos with me. Last year, you guys were the king of the comeback. That was a fair fright. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, pretty um, pretty exhausted. St Kilda went to the final siren. and I'm sure we'll take a look at some things, but it was a great win overall. I just want to quickly honour. Um, it was great to have Nicky Winmar here, obviously, 30 years ago, and it was an absolute privilege to be on the ground with him. So it was great to honour him from both clubs, and it was an awesome experience. Well said. At three-quarter time, what was Fly's message to you? Because you had the weight of inside 50s. Was it a matter of keep doing that and you'll eventually crack them? I think so, yeah. We just stuck to our system. I think end of the third quarter we could feel a bit of our momentum coming, so um, we knew we were on the right track. Unfortunately, we could capitalise at the start of last. PB's galore for you on a personal note today. 42 disposals and about 850 metres gained. I know you're not about the individual achievements, but you are having a wonderful season. How pleasing is it for you that you're in such great form? Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I wouldn't have, um, wouldn't have guessed that, so that's nice. But I genuinely am just the beneficiary of um, players around me. So um, it's great, and we'll move on to next week, Essendon. Gather round. It's been pretty awesome. And the Collingwood chant ringing out here at Adelaide Oval. It's not a home game, but it must feel like a home away from home when the Magpie Army follows you. Yeah, best supporter base in the land, I think. We feel so comfortable coming to these away trips because they come and support us and they're our 24th man, so we love it. You touched on Anzac Day. It is the biggest home and away game on the calendar. What a privilege it is to play in it. How excited are you for this one? Oh, a massive privilege. I think it was one of my favourite games last year playing in it. I've always watched them as a young kid, so um, it's a privilege to play in it. And I think there's a few boys that will play their first Anzac Day, so it's very exciting. An impressive performance. Well done today. Thank you. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's great to watch, isn't he? Only his second year. Imagine what he's going to be like when he grows up. <laughs> uh, he's just oh, unbelievable. Oh, oh. So, uh, Ross Lyon, he had a bit of a laugh about that. Can't question their commitment, their fight. They fight it out all the way to the finish line. They looked as if they were finished. But I tell you, that man was fantastic. Again, down with Eddie Betts. How great was that? Yeah, it was, it was a good good win for the boys and obviously in Adelaide as well. The, you know, the, the crowd turned out to be really well and obviously Saints come back in the last bit and um, yeah, it was very loud. It's good. How are you feeling? Feeling good? Body feel good? Yeah, body's never been better. You know, obviously going through that stuff last year and you know the support I had with my family, um, obviously getting the trade to come to Collingwood and obviously you know having Brad there in, in Melbourne. Um, you know, my partner and my little one, um, yeah, full credit to them and, um, yeah, no, body's gone good. And you got a couple of good little fours there. you got Jamie Adder and Jack Univin down there. It's pretty special working with them. It's like the next three amigos there. Yeah, it is. It's, it's fun. Um, you know, never been in a forward line environment like that where it's, you know, in, the, in that round one where we were down by, you know, three or four goals, we're still smiling and, you know, to get that turnout and to play alongside them in the tours as well with Ash and Checkers and, you know, Will down there as well, it's, um, you know, it's amazing. And last but not least, how special was the banner today with Uncle Nicky Winmar coming down 30 years, you know, where he took that stance. It was pretty special for two footy clubs to run through that banner. Yeah, it is, especially, you know, what happened back then. And, um, yeah, you know, full credit to, to the, both, both clubs to, you know, come together in Adelaide and the crowd turned out well to do that. And full credit to Uncle Nicky to, you know, be, you know come out and, um, you know, it was such an honour to play this round for him. And, um, yeah, no, I love him. Uh, that's good work, brother. Keep being deadly, keep staying black and keep killing it, brother. Good work.